What's your angle, Pythagoras? Pythagoras. Pythagoras. What's your angle, Pythagoras? A math adventure by Julie Ellis, illustrated by Phyllis Hornung. <laughs> Long ago, in ancient Greece, there lived a curious boy, boy named Pythagoras. Pythagoras just couldn't help po poking his nose into places. <laughs> Sometimes his cu curiosity got him in trouble, but sometimes it paid off. <clears throat> One day, Pythagoras that sat in the shade of an old olive tree. He could see the harbor and the sparkling blue sea around the island where he lived. Nearby, two work two workmen were building a temple. They began to argue. This ladder is too short to reach the roof. Pepperos grumbled. That's not possible, said Saltus. The wall is 12 feet tall, so I made the ladder 12 feet long. Pepperos roared. The ladder only reaches the roof when it's flat against the wall and then no one can climb it. This is as bad as the columns on the porch. <laughs> but Douglas poked his head out from behind the tree. What's wrong with the columns, he asked. Round. It's a uh, pesky Pythagoras again. Pythagoras. Pythagoras again. Stop bothering us. At this rate, we'll never finish the temple. As the workmen argued, Pythagoras crept around to the other side of the building. For Columns stood on crooked. Crooked bases. Some columns. Columns. Columns lean to the left. Others tilted to the right. These columns will never hold up a roof. <laughs> Pythagoras said to himself, I wish there were something I could do to help. Still thinking about the problem, he ran. He ran for home for dinner. When he got home, his father was talking about his ship. I sailed to Crete with a shipload of tiles, but Lepus and bon Boundus got there before me. With their fast new ship, they will take away all my customers. Mm -hmm. Through a mouthful of bread and olives, Pythagoras asked Father, You always sail to Rod Rhodes if Rhoda is first and then to it would be a to Crete. Why don't you j just sail straight from here to Crete? It would be a lot faster. It's too dangerous, he f his father replied. It would not be safe to sail straight from here to Crete. Unless I knew that exact instinct out sea. At sea, I could miss Crete and end up anywhere. I'm leaving for Egypt tomorrow. I want you to come with me soon, son. One day you will command 
my merchant ships, and you'll have much to learn. At dawn the next morning, Pythagoras and his father set sail as they sailed along the coast. Pythagoras said, I can't wait to see Alexandria. I hear they have great buildings there. I might want to be a builder someday. But son, you are going to be a merchant. His father said, his father said, the life of a merchant is exiting. You get to sail to far away places. He put an R around Pythagoras's 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 shoulders. You just have to look at it from the right angle. Soon they were sailing into the port of Alexandria, the capital city of Egypt. Pythagoras marveled at the great lighthouse that stood proudly against the sky. Soldiers and preppers should see this. He exclaimed. At the dock, a man greets them. I am the builder. Nuff er. To meet a re excited, excited to meet a real builder. Have you built anything around here? He asked. Neff nodded. As a matter of fact, I helped to build, build the lighthouse. Did you get the base so straight? How did you get the base so straight? My daughter asked. Thinking of the crooked car come comes back at home, you must be a master builder. Nell smiled and stuck out his chest. The secret is the special rope that's been used by my family for ages. You use a knotted rope to cut stone, I don't ask. Neff laughed. My dear boy, this rope does not cut stone, right? I use the rope to make special triangles. I call it the Great Triangle because it helps me make a nice square corner that's exactly the right angle for cutting stone. Neff let Pythagoras hold the rope. Pythagoras made some triangles, but none had the right angle. How long do you make each side? he asked. Oh, I've shown you too much already, chuckled Neff. As he took back his rope, why don't you run along now? As his father and Neff talked, Pythagoras found an old piece of rope and tied knots in it. He pulled the rope into different triangles. Finally, he made a triangle that seemed right. Another, it had three lengths on one side, four lengths on another side, and five lengths on the longest side. 
I've got it, he said to himself. <sighs> just, just then Pythagoras Pythagoras' father Pythagoras Pythagoras' father called him Carrier's Crate of Tile Son Enough and I will carry the rest I will carry them not sighted, but I've hurt my thumb, so I can't. You'll have to make two trips. When they got to the house, Neff was building, he said. While you get the rest of the tiles, I'll get the money. I owe you. The grumbling Pythagoras' father headed back to the ship. Neff patted Pythagoras on the head. Head, be a good boy and watch these tiles for me, he said as he disappeared into the house. And don't touch anything. Pythagoras looked around the sunny courtyard. In the middle stood a, a statue base made of stone. Stone. He took some tiles out of the crate. Just to see how they would look around the base. I can put them back quickly, he thought. He made a row of three red tiles along the along one side. The statue of the base. He added two more rows of red tiles, making a square. Some of these crates have blue tiles, Pythagoras said. So Pythagoras. Pythagoras said. Some red, soon red and blue tiles were, were scattered everywhere. Pythagoras made a square square of blue tiles and a big square of red and blue tiles. He was admiring, admiring. admiring his work when he noticed the statue base is a right triangle. Its sides are three, four, and five tiles long. He counted the tiles. Strange, he thought. The nine tiles in the red square plus the sixteen tiles in the blue square equal to twenty-five tiles. There are exactly twenty-five tiles in the big red and blue square. Suddenly, a voice demanded, What do you think you are doing? Nuff rushed into the courtyard. Pythagoras, Pythagoras' father was right behind him. What's all this? Nuff snapped. snapped. I'm sorry, Pythagoras said. Beep, Pythagoras said. I was going to put the tiles back, but I found out something interesting. I don't care what you found, interrupted Neff. Look at this mess. Pythagoras picked up the tiles. His father said sternly, in hurry, we have many more stuff to make today. <gasps> The next day, Pythagoras and his father set sail for home. To the past, the, to pass the time, Pythagoras drew 
a picture of the tile square. 